Now, I wonder if you think about this when you see all the people traveling around. I always wonder, where is this person going to be when he's 70 years old? Right. So, because we're going to live to be 70, like lifespans yeah. increasing. Like, where, where are these people going to be? Like, they're not going to be doing, they can't, they're not going to be able to be doing the same job or the job's right. going to be gone or whatever. Just what's going to happen to everybody? I mean, it's going to be interesting. I mean, the people that are in their 40s, 50s now that, that, I mean, it's very tough to go out there and find something. I mean, it is very hard, which is why the Yang or somebody that recognizes the scope of the problem. See, I think that what makes Yang interesting as opposed to these other people is that even though, like you said, he's maybe dramatizing the, the uh, you know, the, the effects of automation for his own personal gain. The, he talks with very big ideas. Yeah, he's super the, smart. He's at the, the highest IQ right, of all of them. The scope of the problems that we face are big. And when we see politicians talk about them, they make them very small because in, in order to make them seem surmountable, these obstacles, you make them small. Go, well, I on my first day, I'll commission a panel. I mean, we can. I did it the other day on my podcast. I, I said like, Ask me any question, and I can just answer it by saying, on my first day, I'm going to get the smartest people, put them in a room, we're going to get a panel, I'm going to listen to people, I've I've been to the border, I've seen them, and it's just like a formula of what they say, and none of it means anything. It's just right. word salad. It's just like, smartest people, first day, I've been there, I've been all over the country, talking to people just like you, their concerns are the same, so on day one, I'm going to commission a panel of people, we're going to raise taxes, we're going to, you know, everything's just the same thing. Over and over again. So you have a Yang or somebody who comes in and goes, no, the robots are going to eat us and you all get $1,000. You go, oh, okay. Well, that's different. Right, it's, it's just different. just craving that difference, which is where Trump came from. I think I Trump's think like, no, nope, we're all liars. We're cheaters. We're liars. I'm the biggest liar and cheater. And now I'm going to help you. And everyone went, oh, well, well, that's nice. Well, think about it. Everybody has been different, right? So, So Trump was very different. Of course, Barack Obama was very different. Very different. Um, in, even, in appearance. Yeah. Not in anything else. Right. No, I he mean, he was a good, I think he was a decent president, a good president for what he had to contend with. But, you know, what was very interesting about Obama was he was pretty much business as usual. And Trump's kind of business as usual. Yeah, too. we're still in Afghanistan. We're still yeah, in Iraq. We'll always like, be there. And they don't even explain why we're there anymore. E even W was different because people were sick of Clinton and Gore. Sure. Gore was just going to be a continuation of that. Yeah. And then. Reagan was different from Carter. Carter was different from Nixon Ford. Yeah. So, you know, I think I think difference wins, not just in politics, but in career. Like, look at comedy. Who wins in comedy? You have, you know, Louis C.K. was obviously very different. He was he, he was he was making a new special every year. It was kind of like started that whole trend of we've got to write and rewrite and take every topic under the sun and make a new special every year. Uh you know, you're very different with your, you know, you have this like kind of such a strong point of view. Again, I said it before, but yeah. you're, you're not, you're kind of like taking what everybody's thinking and twisting it into something funny, like a, like a pretzel that looks funny now, as yeah, opposed yeah, to yeah. like just this. And, and I don't know what comedian is just the standard thing. And then he just rises up and, and becomes yeah. successful. I can't think of anybody who's just like, Oh yeah, let's just follow so the line. What, what do you think it is? What, because it's interesting because I criticize a lot of like what I consider to be hucksters. They peddle this idea that everybody just has to hustle and grind and go out and do this and that. And the other thing, because I think that at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people are just not built to have their own business. That's just the reality. It doesn't mean that they're bad people, but there's just a lot of people that are not, so to tell everyone they should be their own boss or that there's a business inside of everyone or any of those things, I don't think are true. However, I do think that people should try to do what they, but how do you reconcile the idea of people having a nature and some people's nature is to be a leader. Some people's na nature is to be a follower. It's not a judgment on them as a person. I know there's a lot of bad leaders and a lot of good followers. And, and I don't even mean in their private life. I'm just talking about the way that it all shakes out in the world. Um, you know, I do videos about Gary Vee and stuff that are kind of funny, poking fun at him. I don't think he's the worst guy in the world, but like that whole ethos of telling my whole generation of people and the people under me that they all need to have their own company. It doesn't matter if they don't know uh, what or, you know, like one of my favorite quotes from Gary is he goes, ideas are shit. It's all about execution. It's like, well, then what, what are we doing? Right. What are we executing? Right. So to me, it's like that's the big fake out of the whole thing. It's like ideas are shit. 
Doesn't matter. Just execute. And it's like, execute what? Right. Or execute how? Right. Because you need ideas on execution. Like right. there's bad execution and there's good execution. Right. Like I've seen plenty of businesses fail because they took the hard way to execute something as opposed to a much easier way just because they didn't have practice coming up with ideas. You have to be good at coming up with ideas to know how to execute something. But let me ask you, why do you think someone like Gary or other kind of business self-help gurus that appeal to a certain audience, why do you think they're saying that? Well, I don't know. I think that they're making, this is how that they, uh, this is their business, right? Their business, they're selling an idea. And the idea is that people are going to be self-sufficient and successful and happy if they follow this 10 point plan or if they do X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, I just find a lot of it to be hollow because people ask me all the time about like, how, how does somebody start in comedy, this, that, and the other thing? I'm like, you just figure it out. There is really no blueprint. You're either kind of meant to be in this crazy world or you're not. And you're going to figure that out relatively quickly, maybe, if you're a self-aware person. There's a tremendous amount of sacrifice you have to put into getting good at it. And you probably have to be a little crazy. You probably have to be a little off-center to truly want to get involved in this, right? So already it's very tough to then write a blueprint for somebody because there's so many variables. And there. so when I see Gary and people like that just pollute, because his, his whole theory of everything is just pollute. Pollute the world with content. Post four times a day. It doesn't really matter what you're saying. Ideas are shed, execution. Shed. And to me, that type of stuff's ruining the world. The idea of which you pollute, pollute, pollute with no thought behind it a lot of the worst trends in our world start, I think, with people that have no idea what they're doing, just doing. And then I think that just sets up a huge, because then we're like, yeah, everything's great. We don't need politicians to have any clue. Like, if we're all just doing and throwing it out there, content is king, boom, boom. You know, marketing is queen. That's another thing he says. And it's just like, but what is the actual thing that we are marketing? What is the thing that we're doing what is the value? Where is the actual value other than this perceived value? And that's my big problem is like, you'll see certain people, you know, certain restaurants are so hyped up. They're everywhere. They have a dish that's all on Instagram. Everybody, they're hard to get in. And you get there and you eat the food and you go, eh. So what the hell was the point of it? Now, obviously, the people that run the restaurant are making a lot of money. But you, the consumer that go in there and go, the food's actually not that good. And we just got taken for a little bit of a ride. To me, I mean, I guess the value is that you got taken for a ride. Maybe you won't get taken next time. But to me, I'm like, a lot of people that I know that are entrepreneurs, they have a nature. Their nature is that they're entrepreneurs from when they were young. Gary Vaynerchuk's one of them. So this right, idea- With, with, with uh, uh, you know, he, he, he kind of states he was born with nothing. And right. I, I guess he came from Russia and Ukraine, moved to the United States. Think, yeah, yeah. And, and um, then his parents started a wine store and he right. kind of, I don't want to say inherited that wine store, but worked there and really built that up. And he modernized up. it online. I'm, yeah. Again, it's not really, I'm sure he doesn't like me if he knows who I am, which I think he does. But it's not about him per se. It's an entire dimension of the internet. And specifically that business guru self-help can be like, I love sales trainers, guys like Dale Carnegie, Zig Ziglar, because they're telling you how to sell. They're literally saying, when you sit down with somebody, look them in the eye, ask for the order, da, 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 da. They're giving you kind of the step-by-step -step thing about a specific process, a sales process that you can kind of apply to a bunch of different things. I'm not against the idea of motivational people. I think Tony Robbins has some valuable stuff, but there's something very hollow about the specific strain of motivation that guys like Ty Lopez and Gary Vaynerchuk do, where they're literally walking around a $10 million mansion and they go, and if you want to know how to get this, click here. It's like, no, that's not it. I already know that that's not it. I already know that by clicking there, that's I'm not winning. I'm not getting the mansion by clicking there. I, I, I feel that instinctually in my heart. Oh, oh my God. So one time I was in California and... You know, everybody who's working for Ty Lopez, a lot of them are like his relatives. What does he do? <laughs> what do these people do? Right. I, I'm like a man. Yeah. All right. I'll describe. Because uh, so Ty Lopez's cousin or sister or whatever says, hey, you should, if you're in L.A., stop on by. So, of course, I'm not going to pass up that opportunity. I stop on by Ty Lopez's mansion. And, you know, and it was kind of like living in this insane world. Like 
everything was wrong about the interaction. So he tells me to show up at, at three or his cousin says, show up at three. Ty will be ready then. And he, he, they put me in a room and he's not ready till three 30. Then every seven minutes, he had to do some different activity. That was some rule of his. So for seven minutes, he would get a massage for seven minutes. He was getting a haircut for seven minutes. He ate lunch. And then there was one point somebody literally ran up to him and, and like gave him a brand new pair of sneakers and he put those sneakers on. Then he says, walk with me to the gym. He does like stretching for seven minutes and for seven minutes. You shouldn't breathe. You know? be <laughs> nice. That could be. And then, and then later that night I had to go to this event. It was like, this charity event, Elton John was was singing and it was there was a fairly high price for this event. At the end of the event, around one in the morning, everybody's leaving. Ty Lopez is coming in. He's in a tuxedo. He's coming in. Didn't have to pay anything because he's coming. The event's over. So he's walking right. in. He's got his um, selfie stick and he's like, oh, here I am with my good friend James Altucher. And like he's as if he had you know, he's in the tuxedo as if he was like yeah. at the event the whole time. And uh uh, but it's the same thing with a lot of these guys. They create this vision of this this world, this imaginary world, you know, like the mansion he rents. You know, you go to, he, you know, he has this one ad where it's like, you got to read books. You go to where the books are. It's all like these, you know, fake, like it's like this statue of books, like right. carved into his. So everything right. is kind of like a mirage. Yeah. And then, and then, but he's selling this, this dream and people, young people in particular buy into it. And then since Ty Lopez has no actual expertise himself, and I'm just, you know, I don't know, maybe he does, but then he'll team up with some real estate investor. And he's like, here's my good friend who does real estate investing. You could buy this course for $6,000 and you, your very first deal, you're going to make $300,000. And he'll simply split the profits of that with that real estate guy. So he'll do that all day long. Like, team up with people who are selling these courses. But his first thing is, hey, you should live a life like me. Here's my 67 steps to living the life like me. You'll get it for free. People sign up. So he has 100,000 people sign up for his email list. Now he's got 100,000 people who love him and they're all young people who maybe are a little more gullible. Then he's selling these $6,000 courses or $3,000 courses. People will, these young people will buy them and he splits the price and he makes like 50, 60 million a year on that. Like, so he, wow. he went from good for him. <laughs> hey, I never get mad at them. Good for him. Well, and listen, I love a huckster. I love a con. I call him out because it's funny and I have to. But keep hitting him over the head. Keep whacking him over the head. Well, I love it. He, he good. Went, but the weird thing is he went from like he there's someone's got to take these people's money. <laughs> it's got someone's got to take their money. Someone's got to tell these people that after their three thousand dollar real estate seminar, they, too, will own a house in a, you know. <laughs> the Hollywood Hills or whatever. I, I, it's just great. Good for them. So, so Gary's model, cause I asked why I, I've known Gary for a long time and I've asked why Is he a I'm, fun guy. He doesn't seem fun. Uh, I mean, it's a very, it, all these people, a hundred percent, they're very odd to interact with. Like I once even pitched a TV show gurus gone wild. Cause I knew, I know all these people. And I was like, uh, when you look into their, when you peek into their inner lives, it's a lot different than what their- Gurus re- gone wild? Yeah. <laughs> Please tell me I can find this somewhere. <laughs> I want to make it, but no one- Oh, uh, I thought you, I thought it was a thing that we could find. No, no, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta write it up. Gurus gone wild. So, uh, but like Gary, he's not selling courses like Ty Lopez, but he is selling the same vision. Like if you, if you hustle and grind and, and execute- I have no problem with gurus. Just tell me a real thing. Okay, here's the real like thing. Your, your, your expertise is, and I could be wrong here, but like Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, things like that, right? Yeah, Part of but, it. but I, I've, been, I've, been, I've written over 20 books. Right. I've been- But you're giving I've, people like information. Yeah, I use my, yeah. First, my first business just to, the one minute background. My first business in the 90s before every company had a website, I built the websites for AmericanExpress.com, uh, Bad Boy Records, yeah, dude, Death Row I Records. I watched 45 minute Gary V talks where he says nothing. <laughs> 45 minutes. I don't know what I should do, what he's doing. I mean, we're talking an hour. Right. I genuinely don't, other than post on TikTok. Right. I don't know what to do. I, I, he goes, social media is your friend. I'm like, I know. Kindness is delicious. Gary, what do we do? Like, I want to know. So, I, I'd so, like to go on his podcast and maybe I'm wrong. I'll, I'm willing to be wrong. I just, I haven't found anything that's. So, so let's, so I asked why, like his company has 800 
people, employees, from what I understand. And I've run, an, I, my first business was an ad agency building websites. And with 800 people, you're going to go out of business pretty quickly. You can't support right. 800 people in a service business because once there's even a tiny tick down, you're out of business. Right. And so, so there's a why there. Like, okay, he's supported by various billionaires, from what I understand, who, who invest in his business and, and keep it going. But then what's it good for? Well, these billionaires own valuable consumer brands that we know of every single day. And because Gary Vee has so captivated the Gen Z audience with this vision of if you just hustle and grind and 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 execute, you're going to be rich. And the Gen Z people love him. He gets millions of followers on every platform. They 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 literally they love what he's saying, uh, even though it might not mean it. He's selling this dream. So so brands then hire him and bil billionaires who own these brands support his business and keep it alive because now they have this direct voice to hit the Gen Z audience. It's the same technique as Trump. Trump dominates Twitter, so he doesn't need any news company to support him. He broadcasts to 50 million people on Twitter. Gary broadcasts to every Gen Z person on TikTok or Twitter right. or Instagram. So if you're selling like the latest fashion brand, you pay Gary a bunch of money or you invest in his company to keep it going. And now you have this direct voice to Gen Z because of because Gary has this message, whether it's correct or vapid or incorrect or whatever, he has this direct voice now to Gen Z. And that's yeah. his model. Well, God love him. I, you know, again, I don't begrudge anyone their the way they make money. I just I have to call out things that are funny. And they're they're fun. It's funny. It's funny to have somebody all day tell you to hustle or grind. It's just funny. It's especially funny when there is no mental health care in the country, and that's all you get. Yeah. All you get is a guy on Instagram telling you to hustle. Well, that's well, funny to me that that's where the world is at. One time I took it's a bunch. Kooky. One time I took a bunch of his photos where he's giving all these inspirational quotes, yeah. but every photo has him just looking at his phone in different positions. He's like right. sitting looking at his phone. He's on a bus looking at his phone. He's on a train looking at his phone. And I I what if they took a phone away from that guy for like an hour? What would he do? Would he bite someone? Would he kill somebody? I don't think he would know what to what, say or yeah. what to do. And I put it I put it up on my Instagram, this nine by nine grid of him looking at a phone. And like I say, Gary, what are you looking at? And that's the last time he ever spoke to me. Interesting. <laughs> so I think he told I, I don't know. You Seems never know, right? Sensitive. Yeah. You don't yeah. you never know. Maybe he's just busy, but usually we would have some back and forth. Right, and right. uh that was that. Interesting. But uh Interesting. but but there but that's again like everything on the surface has some narrative. So right. and you never hear what the actual narrative is. I had to dig to figure out how is he how is he in business? I had to right. dig to figure out who how does he instantly get millions of followers on every platform? Like it's right. strange stuff happening. And then also because he has this Gen Z audience, companies will come up to him and Uber will come up to him and say, Hey, can you be an advisor? We'll give you a quarter of a percent of the company. And he collects those uh little advisory percentages yeah. as well. And you can make a ton of money that way. Right. God love him. Yeah. God bless. So so it it, it is interesting the idea, you know. No one will say the actual under there's a there's the mountaintop and then no one will say the entire narrative that's underneath the mountain.